Johnny spitting in the background. In chimp language, that means hurry up. Do we have everything? Bettina, look at Bonnie and Alfred. You can see how happy they are. They want physical contact, short, affectionate touches. Susie's laughing. They're happy to see each other again. They weren't in the box for long, but they're still excited to see each other again. It's not about the food. They're excited because they're a group. You can hear the feeding sounds. They're so happy, and that makes us happy. As human beings, we say, yes, the food's nice, but Baby Boy has been telling us for the past two minutes how good the food is. I'm waiting for Lingua to see if she'll come down to get some food. David and Alfred are at the bottom, but the others have gone up again. She's coming down now. It's a proper feast. And they make so much noise when they're eating. Showing how much they're enjoying it. The liquid rotating in these glass containers would suffice to wipe out humankind. HIV capsules are stored en masse with Immuno. In order to find a vaccine for this deadly disease, scientists believe experiments on chimpanzees are unavoidable. In my opinion, there's no way we can do without chimpanzees for the development of AIDS vaccines. Human experiments would be the only alternative. We use chimpanzees too, and anyone who wants to prevent us from doing so belongs in prison or a mental home. We move the apes around between the different areas, between their living boxes and their solitary boxes. So we have direct contact with them, without glass panes. We talk to them and we train with them. It's a new experience for the apes when new people show up here. You can hear my colleague speaking with an ape. You can hear Maxi. This is it. What? 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 
dia. You can't go in there or you'll be spat at. That's his home. And he expresses that by throwing things at you, such as a chair, to show you that you're not allowed into his home. This is the real life of apes. This is the big group. Some relax. They all lead their lives in different ways. It's important for the re-socialization project. The apes are still apes and can choose how to shape their everyday lives. Peter's a bit insecure. We can't go past without talking to him. He's being kept in solitude. It's important that he can watch us and see what we do. He's being kept on his own because he has problems living in the group. We've tried several times to introduce him into the group of male chimps. That always resulted in serious injuries. Then we tried to bring him together with other chimps one-on-one. -on -one. But he then sustained a serious injury to his testicles. That's the response to Jella's attempt to show off. These two got bad injuries, but it's still important that the chimps have contact with one another. This is their behavior. They don't have physical contact to anyone. This was very close up, but the more you play with him, the more he demands. We're trying to get the chimp into the docking cage. He's scared. He's very worked up. Please stay there. That may look very easy, but the animals have been trained to get into these cages, because otherwise we'd have to sedate them every time we wanted to move them. So it's good we have this training, though we shouldn't forget that the system we have here is the one they had in the lab. 
Haben Sie schon in der Forschung gehabt, denn die sind früher mit diesen They were always taken to their experiments in these cages. You can see that they really trust us. They know we're helping them. Geht's, Bianca? Vienna. The Austrian pharmaceutical company Immuno introduced the prototype of an HIV vaccine at a press conference. The serum is currently being tested on chimps. However, it's not yet known if the serum would have the same effect on people. They're all between 25 and 29. Johannes is 29. And Johannes is 29. You've got to smell everything. This is the affection that's still there over the years. He learned this behavior in the research lab. I was his personal keeper. I was to be like a chimp. Johannes has gained 15 kilograms in muscle mass since he came here from the lab because of the daily exercise he gets. He struggled a lot to go into this big space. That frightened him, and the stuff on the ground frightened him. That was a box with He's asking for my attention again. It was a box with glass and a wire front and concrete walls. You can never develop normal behavior during nest building that way because they only had a mat in that box. This is normal group life. Xara is our big one. Xara wants to play with us, but we also want the animals to play with each other. She's curious what I have. Here, take a look. This is now the 19th year that I've had the privilege of being with the chimps. When I came to the lab, it was very emotional for me. The animals look at you, and you know that they spend 24 hours in a room measuring six square meters, and that's their living space all year long. It's depressing. You think, they're here for us. Either you leave and never come back, or you think you want to do whatever you can to make it better for them. They look at you and say, please help us. I'm 
David always looks at the cart. He's always curious about what's coming today. When I came here for the first time with Renate, I thought, it's all black, black fur. I was scared. I'd never seen chimps like this. I'd imagined them to be like chimps from the telly that sit on your lap. We went on, and then it got a bit better with every group. Finally, you get an eye for the fact that they're not all black. One has freckles, the other is a bit lighter. We took our time. I sat down in front of a group and looked at it all. I was fascinated. Never mind how hard we work or how exhausting it is, where else do you get this much back in a job? There are all these gentle touches. On the one hand, we know they're dangerous, they're so intelligent, they're wild animals and we always have to be careful, but they're so gentle too. The way he brushes his face with his fingers, Anton's really enjoying that. The only time we're that relaxed is when we're lounging in the sun. Gabi always pays very close attention to what Ingrid's doing. Clyde exploits that and touches Ingrid. Ingrid doesn't like physical contact and doesn't allow it. Clyde seized the moment and thought, I can touch her now. Gabi, don't be jealous. Well, Ingrid, we fought, didn't we? It was a long journey. I was a stranger for them at first, and they didn't want to accept me. I built this relationship little by little. I learned to feed them with carrots. We always kept the longest ones for me. And then I took the carrots to the chimps. When I wanted to give her a carrot, she was always friendly until she frightened me at the last moment. It really made my heart beat faster, and they all know. We have Bianca today. I went out because I couldn't carry on feeding them because I was so nervous and because they saw they had me in the bag for the day. I know from stories that Gabi, Martha and Ingrid have always been different. 
They weren't approachable by people during their time in the lab. Immuno had shifted its focus more and more to HIV research. The organization that works with what's currently the world's most dangerous virus has the strictest safety precautions. In order to find a vaccine against the deadly disease, the scientists believe that experiments on chimpanzees are unavoidable. After 15 years, Immuno abandoned AIDS research using chimpanzees without having arrived at any result. In 2002, Immuno was taken over by another pharmaceutical company, Baxter. Baxter set up a house for the 40 chimpanzees in a safari park near Vienna. This will really be the way the chimps will take. The gate will open, they'll have wind in their faces and they'll see the grass and trees and they'll be outside. They'll be just as excited in that moment as we are now. My pulse is racing. It's a great feeling, a feeling of good things to come. You can hear the chimps and you can hear our excitement. We've waited for six years that the outside enclosures are ready for the chimps. And now the time's finally approaching. It's really coming true. You can't believe how excited we are. It's sad that some of them had to get to 30 before they could be outside again. It's very moving. This is what we can still offer them. They have to start from scratch. They have to learn to listen to the birds and understand the natural environment. We're very excited. Looking out is enough to show us that that's how it'll be. For these chimps, it's the best that we can give them. They can go outside and live their everyday lives without stress. They can get up in the morning and think, I'm going to get up today and have a nice day. I don't think we can make up for what's happened to them. Imagine if what had happened to them had happened to people. 
that you would have had been put into solitary confinement out of service to humanity. For me, you can't make up for that. It's terrible what was done to them. It's not wiped away by giving them an outside enclosure. What happened, happened. Basically, this shows how hard it is for these apes to have a normal ape life. Something like this should never be done to any animals. And making up for that kind of wrong is very hard. You can't do something and then think you can fix it. You can't always dwell on the past, because you would feel terrible about what happened to them. It's very sad. All the keepers feel this emotional pressure. That's why we choose to look to the future with optimism and to support the apes. But it doesn't make up for what happened to them. You can prove what kind of despicable things happened. This immuno story was a big scandal. And to the detriment of these wonderful chimps. That was really horrendous. Here I have the immuno files. All these terrible things happened in Sierra Leone. I have the case files here so we can take a look. Immuno was a pharmaceutical giant that used politics and corruption to pursue its goals. It ruthlessly did everything to get chimps and other animal materials. But they're not materials, not that they cared about that. It started in 1982, but nobody knew much then. They worked with forged documents. I'm an expert in species conservation. If someone shows me papers like that, I say to customs that they're fake and should be confiscated. I don't want to say how I got the papers. It's not relevant to you. Santa sent them to me. Everybody needed my help. Everybody needed the information. Everybody needed the documents that I had copied from the government files. <laughs> I'm not sure they knew about it. The first thing I did upon arrival in Freetown was to go see Franz Sitter. 
I Franz Sitter was I uh, quite an odd person. I uh, he was by that time a little bit past middle age. He was extremely uh, Germanic in his behavior. Um, when he greeted me, he uh, did his usual, he leaned forward and clicked his heels and said, <laughs> how are you, Dr. Teleki? Sitter, there it is. He was a notorious big time animal smuggler and animal dealer. You could order everything. He was very popular among big game hunters and that clientele. He was ruthless. It was all about the money. He was living on a farm and the entire farm was full of wild animals. Every kind you can imagine. And at that point, I realized that this was a big business. It was not somebody who was interested in selling a few chimpanzees. It was a person who was interested in selling ivory, diamonds, wild animals, everything that was making money in Sierra Leone. The hunters went out and shot the mothers in order to obtain the babies. The problem with chimpanzees is they live in groups. You're not going to find a mother and the baby by itself anywhere. And the other adults in these groups were tried to defend uh, the mothers. And so more chimps would get shot than just a mother. I uh, Sitter himself was responsible for the exportation of at least uh, four or five thousand chimps. And by that time we knew that for every chimpanzee that made it to Europe or to North America, there would be anywhere between five and ten chimps who would be killed. In this schreiben an den Herrn Consul Bieber. This letter to Consul Bieber is incredible. The Austrian consul got involved. The political system was abused. I can't understand how something like that can happen. Immuno was like a state within a state. They were brutal with their bribery, and it's all in writing. Let me read you a paragraph. In return for the impressive gift to the president prompted by you, we were thinking of giving a representative crystal chandelier by the Lobmeyer Company. Do you think it'll be appreciated? And if yes, what dimensions would be in order? The president is bribed and these fools do it in writing, and now they're unlucky enough that I got my hands on it. And as a result of having access to all this information, I, I was able to find out everything that was happening between Bieber and the government, Bieber and Sitter, uh, Immuno and Bieber, Immuno and Sitter. It was a ready-made organization which could be applied to getting the chimps out of the country illegally. They also had very good connections in Austria, as I later discovered, to be able to get the chimps into Austria, despite the fact that the environmental protection people in Vienna opposed this. That's what we see in Gestalt Hub. At that time, I was responsible for species protection in the environmental department of the city of Vienna. Immuno had to get a permit from us to be allowed to keep chimps, because they wanted to keep them in a lab in Vienna. Seventeen chimpanzees are in this cage. Three sick animals are still in the individual cages. After six months in quarantine, these chimps will be used to test the vaccine for hepatitis.
Und da ging das dann also so los mit dem ganzen Aufrollen. Wie sie That's when the question started. How did they even get here? We had an expert report that chimps are pests, and the best that you can do with them is shoot them and export the young. Mr. Schweiger, who wrote the disastrous report, was in cahoots with Mr. Zitter and Mr. Bieber. And Mr. Bieber was an honorary consul, and Mr. Zitter was a well-known animal dealer who worked down there. This triumvirate made it all possible. They all helped each other, and so the papers were legal, but the report was wrong. You couldn't and can't sell and keep chimpanzees for commercial purposes, as is stated in Schedule 1 of the Washington Convention. Medical tests on chimpanzees are only allowed in exceptional circumstances. The Vienna-based company Immuno does such experiments and is therefore the main target for animal rights activists. We weren't allowed to film at Immuno. We were told it was too dangerous for the camera team since the animals were infected with hepatitis and HIV. Although the chimps aren't definitely sick, they merely get their blood taken as samples. They get an injection. It takes a tenth of a second for the liver biopsy needle to do its job, and all that takes place under general anesthetic. That's not just a heinous crime against species conservation. It's also the worst kind of animal cruelty. They were confined in cages of 90 by 90 by 80. This idiot, Rufingshofer, and he can sue me for saying that, said, chimps are nesting animals. They don't need more. Incredible. From an educated man. Chimps are intelligent animals, so you can't have a bad conscience. Imagine if a person gets everything he needs, then he'd sit in front of the television and would just go to the toilet and then eat and watch more television. That wouldn't involve much exercise. And it was the same for the chimps just outside. When the mangoes were ripe, they climbed up and stuffed their faces, and then they lay at the bottom and didn't move anymore. And then they went back up and ate, until nothing was left. They put as little effort as possible into finding food. Die Schimpansen sind sehr lange einzeln gehalten gewesen. 
The chimps were kept in isolation for a very long time. Now they live in groups. They're learning to be strong and to defend themselves. Of course, it's hard for them to assess what to do with this strength. So that can result in serious injuries. They could even kill each other. They were both brought into a room, each in their own docking cage. That was the first time they saw another chimp. Then these docking cages were put opposite each other and then we opened the door, although only by 10 centimeters. This finger was ripped out. Two male chimps pulled each other's fingers when they came together. And then, unfortunately, this happened. You can see how the tendons have been ripped out. There were hundreds of encounters. It was such a difficult journey for the chimps to manage to live together in shared space. During the first encounter, you could hear these screams. Remembering them still gives me goosebumps. I was there. But it's just overwhelming. They didn't let go of each other anymore. That demonstrates that the most important part of the re-socialization project was letting them be together. They really needed that after all those years in isolation. This is the B block. This is where the chimps that were infected with HIV and hepatitis live. Hello. Hello. Mr. Fifi. Hello. The animals here aren't sick. They don't get sick. So they're just like regular chimpanzees. I really notice it with Pepe. He seems like an old man. You can see it in his face. He blushes easily and this lip. It's not a smile, but he's relaxed and attentive to what I'm doing and saying. It's tough that there's never any direct contact to the animals. You don't train to look after animals in order not to have contact with them. At first you think, I can't ever touch them. How's that possible? But you can't do that here. You can't cross those boundaries. They show you in different ways, with looks and gestures. Like now, he's sticking out his fingers. He's asking me to be funny and play with him. I never would have thought that I'd work in a laboratory. 
I feel locked up when I'm indoors. I love the outdoors. It moves you, and you don't forget that. I went through it myself, so I know what the chimps have had to go through. The older you get, the more aware you become of that. You really understand more what was done to them. This is Carmen. She's an example of what was done to them. You can see how trusting she is. She's coming towards you and wants to meet you. But it's still important to her that she has the person she trusts with her. You think this is all the chimpanzees see people wearing these horrible spacesuits? Look at it. Was alles passieren kann, das ist so was gibt. So much can happen. The simple fact that this research even exists, that you can choose to do a job like that. You go there every day and think, I don't like this job. You put that out of your mind. Everyone knew what they were doing it for. During the years I worked there, I always thought, it's crazy. It hurts to see this. If I knew that Johannes couldn't eat anything today because he was going to be anesthetized, that there was going to be a procedure, I could talk to my colleagues. Many didn't understand and said, forget your work when you're at home. But I couldn't do that. The apes were ignored. Imagine you go into a room with four cages lined up. You say, good morning, and feed them. And then you see their eyes that say, come here. Of course, they don't have anyone else and do what they can to attract attention. They beat against the bars and they scream. They really want contact with others. 
But you can't give all of them a lot at the same time. You build it up. I explain to them how the day would go. I always talk to them. It may sound strange, but I always included all of them. But the most terrible part was that at 4 o'clock I went home. I left them. How many hours did they have to sit there with nothing, except for the white tiles? They keep, keep, I've met people, you know, who work in there and they are so torn because, you know, I've met, I've met keepers who desperately want to leave because they cannot stand the conditions in these labs. And yet they feel, well, I'm the only thing the chimpanzee has between itself and a cold, hard, uncaring world. So how can I leave? So they become almost, you know, schizophrenic. It's a horrible situation. I, I totally admire people who, you know, who see the horror, could walk away, but decide to stay and do what they can to make things better. Some chimps stick their feces on the window, often out of boredom. And the sun is very intense, so it just sticks there. But we've had some where we've had to clear that up time and time again. This is Pünktchen's favorite spot. She's close to her poo. They all deal with it differently, and it smells very strongly, too. This is where Pünktchen likes to sleep. She likes to build nests. It doesn't matter what we give her, linen, rags, hoses. She weaves it all into the grid. It's incredible. There are so many knots. No other chimp goes in there and opens any of them. It really is Pünktchen's corner. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we have an issue that has possibly become particularly important because of HIV. Lots of people have prejudices about it. This is about the fact that chimps are used for medical research by the pharmaceutical industry. And that's definitely a problem. But 
it was a, a group in Austria who were fighting against this whole lab situation. And they asked if I would be prepared to debate uh, Dr. Eibel, who ran the Immuno Lab on television, on Austrian television. One is not allowed to visit those places. There's no permission to visit la labs of that sort. Would you allow Miss Goodall to visit your lab? Of course not. The animals are infected and they spit. But isn't there a surveillance camera? Of course we have that. And you must have thick protective suits. That's correct too. She could go in such a suit. Yes, she could. Would you allow that? Of course. Tomorrow morning? If she wants to. They made the mistake of letting me go into one of the new big cages, which was out to show the public. I mean, they actually were proud of a five-foot by five-foot cage in which our closest living relatives would be shut for life. And I went in and I asked the film team, the Austrian TV, I said, shut the door, because I want to feel what it's like. And it was the most shocking feeling to be inside that cage and think, I can't get out and I'm here for keeps. And they had committed no crime. They were just being used because their bodies are like us. The World Wildlife Fund has been critically monitoring the goings-on at Imuno for years. The conservation organization believes that any trade in primates puts them at great risk. They criticize the race among the pharmaceutical companies to obtain new vaccines. The second front came from my good friend in Vienna, Dr. Daniel Slammer. He was with Traffic Austria at the time and the WWF. Later, he was with an animal welfare organization in Vienna. He's completely incorruptible. But he didn't manage for long because the WWF is an organization of mollusks. They don't have a backbone. I was slowly being built up as the tip of the spear, but then people at the top got nervous. And then the shaft of the spear was removed. And suddenly, I was all on my own. I sued everyone who claimed that we illegally imported animals. If you don't defend yourself, you give the impression that you're guilty. We couldn't give the impression that we were dealing in illegal imports. There were lots of libel suits because of the claims of illegal activities and a credit damage suit. That hurts the most. By raising the value of a claim, you can force your opponent to his knees. The value of a claim determines the legal fees and the court costs. And at three and a half million shillings, every hearing was incredibly expensive. To be honest with you, I'm <coughs> World Wildlife Fund Austria did not want to be involved in this. They were interested in pushing papers back and forth. They were not so much interested in going out and trying to save anything. They hired people like me to go out there and fight the fight. But when it came to the point where we came home and we presented them with a problem, in those days, the pharmaceutical industry was very highly represented in WWF, both in Austria and internationally. There were agreements among the pharma bosses. Suddenly the problem wasn't the chimps, it was me. You're dealing with incredibly criminal individuals. It's a kind of war. You have to stand up to that and fight this mafia. Our weapon is our knowledge and the truth, but that's all we have. 
Und wir haben nur die Wahrheit als unsere Waffe, sonst haben wir nichts. They're animals, they're living beings, and so we're scared because they talked about putting them to sleep. That makes you very emotional. What's going to happen to the animals? Baxter decided to let the animals live and die a natural death. The animals have served people for so long. The chimps and all the keepers moved to the safari park. At this time, the building wasn't fully finished yet, and the exterior facilities were still a construction site. You could see that there wasn't a lot of money left to design the interior enclosures. It came out slowly that there was a problem again. In 2004, the Gensendorf Safari Park went bankrupt, dragging the chimp refuge down with it. For five years, the livelihood of the apes and the keepers was under threat.
Entschuldigung ganz kurz. Excuse me. Entschuldigung. Bitte nicht drauf. Please don't smoke Traf, in the grass. Sie, Entschuldigung. Hallo? Wenn Sie wohin If you have to, do it in the port Thanks. Danke. You can't do that. You can't mark out an ape enclosure like that. We're talking about the opening. There's the tent and the event. The people can go in there and take a look, and then we go over there in small groups. The problem is it needs to be planned in detail four weeks in advance and has to be ready with the paint on the walls. We can't manage that. Then we have to move the event, or, if that's not possible, we have to cancel it. I think we're going to get a thousand visitors, not just Jane Goodall, but also the governor and the Minister of Health. This event is costing a lot of money. We have to build a second wall which says we need more money for the interiors and further improvements. We can be certain that there is no other chimpanzee enclosure in the world that will get as much attention as this one from the 6th of September onwards. Ab dem 6. September. Das wird It'll be world famous. Good. In zur gleichen Zeit, wenn das, also wenn sich das hier eher abspielt als hier. A warm welcome to all our viewers. A Merry Christmas at Good Eiderbischel. It's nice that you'll be celebrating this very special evening with us. Michael, your anniversary must have been a very special moment for you. It was more than a special moment. It was a confirmation that I was right ten years ago when I said, I'm going to turn this private property into a meeting place between animals and people. It'll help people have better lives because they can dream about how we could live in the world in peace with those who are weaker than us too. What happened was that when the safari park went bankrupt, Ms. Feudel and a colleague were in my office and asked if the chimps in Genserndorf could be taken in by Eiderbichel. I didn't want that at the time. After this meeting, when this energetic woman, Renate Feudel, sat there, I said, no, I can't do that. I didn't think she'd make another attempt to bring her chimps to us. There's hope again for the former lab animals. At the press conference today, Michael Aufhauser announced how much he fell in love with the animals during his first visit in Gensandorf. And then I knew that it didn't matter if it would be overwhelming or a lot of responsibility. We'd take them. Finally, the outside enclosures being built for them and the re-socialization projects being continued. The employees are also being taken on by Gut Eiderbechel.
It's a huge amount of effort, but we have to do it. We have this burden. And if we want to be civilized, we have to confront this debt and make up for it in some way. If we demonstrate that we're thanking the animals, then maybe some labs will think about what they're doing. Getting the animals there is easy. But what happens afterwards? Aber was passiert nach einem Tierversuch? Kommst du dann bitte nur in die personalen Schleuse? Noch die, danke. Okay, I've checked everything and it's good to go. The electronic gates would open if we chose to open them. We did another walkthrough to check whether everything is okay. We're going to test it again and turn off the electricity. Everyone has to leave the enclosure, please. I've inspected all the fuses. Everyone has to go out so we can close this place. This gate is for people. Now we're going to turn the circuit on. All the circuits are on. We're ready. We could open the gates in 15 minutes. We're going to check everything one last time with the vets and all those involved. For anyone watching, it's very important that if something happens, there's a meeting place where everyone will go together. If that happens, it's very important for everyone to follow instructions. That's important for safety and so that the apes can go out in peace and quiet. It's important that everyone knows that chimps are seven times as strong as people. They're traumatized and nervous, even if they don't want it. If they just cling to us because they're scared, we'll be dead. We need to be aware of that. 
Anyone who wants to can leave now. We're not here without a risk. Human lives are at stake. Today is a momentous day, locked up for 19 years in the lab without daylight. 19 years ago, they decided, we'll be loyal to you. Until this day. Today is about much more than a media appointment. Today will change our whole lives. Das ist also der scharfe Pfeil in dem Gewehr. Rückhorn alle. Ich bin fertig. We made a film because we had to see what it would be like when the chimps go out. During these trial runs, we experienced how the chimps react. I got a call from the office. Most of the American papers have already written about the chimps from Gensendorf. The Washington Post, the New York Times, the London Times is here. And the largest internet site is showing films about Gensendorf, as are the major Italian and Mexican papers. Congratulations. I'm sorry. Wait, did you see it? I know. I know. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. Kevin, look at this.